we're going to be um, in a few different places this evening. Um, if you want to turn there, um, we're going to start in Romans 14. There's a lot that uh, I'm, I'm always, I don't know, I've, I don't know if it's ADHD or just all the busyness I've got going on in, in life and whatnot. I'm, I'm always just thinking about things. I'm thinking about this, thinking about that, and, and even um, working in these homes. Um, I'll be in someone's house and, oh yeah, that's my daughter. She's 19 years old, blah, 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 just graduated high school. And, and sometimes I just sit there and I think, what is it, what is it going to be like in 19 years when Aubrey is graduating high school and going into college? What is my wife going to be like? What am, what am I going to be like? What is our country going to be like? What is our world going to be like? And, and just kind of thinking about, uh, there's a lot to, to contemplate, I guess, just entering this new stage of life, becoming a dad, um, just makes you slow down and contemplate a lot and, and really just consider a lot. Um, one thing I'm, that's always kind of on my mind whenever um, I, I'm in these trans, transitory um, moments in life is always what I'm, I'm doing for God, what I'm, what I'm accomplishing in His will. And um, one thing that I feel sometimes we forget to remind ourselves is the fact that one day everyone will stand before God for a couple of different reasons. And we're, we're not going to get into standing before God um, in the aspect of um, uh, the great white throne, as the great white throne is the um, judgment for sin. But we as Christians will stand before God at the Bible seat. While we may not stand before God to answer for our sins, we will stand before God and answer for what we've done with our lives and what God has given us. And we can look at many passages in the aspect of living for God and, and um, the servants with the talents and, and many other places. Um... But one thing that came to mind was Romans 14.10. Um, and we'll read a few verses here and, and we'll, we'll kind of discuss or go over a few, a few different things. Romans 14.10 says, But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at not, uh, um, not thy brother? For uh, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, so that every one of, a, uh, of us shall give account of himself to God. Um, and of course, we're also challenged um, in Matthew 16, 19, and 20, lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, uh, but lay, but not, oh man, lay not up. Uh, for yourselves treasures on earth, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And uh, we we can't get too focused on um, what we are trying to accomplish for earth in this time, and, and keep in mind what it is that we're trying to accomplish for for heaven. And of course, we we start talking about um, and, and, and when it comes to the bema seat and, and memory and, and looking back and being introspective and um as a retrospective um and whatnot i'm 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 my brain is fried from the heat today so if i say anything silly and, and dumb just just laugh at me and, and we'll just keep on going um but one thing that's interesting is there's a few things about memory in fact uh scientific research has shown that the human brain starts remembering things from the womb um, in fact, memory begins to work 20 weeks after conception. So there's actually been research that's been, um, that, that they believe that memory, even in the womb of 20 weeks, uh, a baby can, can uh, begin to remember things. Um, in fact, memory in our brains and whatnot, it's been proven that it is, um, technically limitless. Of course, they obviously didn't do this test on me because I would have disproven this. Another funny thing about memory is caffeine doesn't maintain memory performance. It only increases alertness, which again would, would make sense 
because it doesn't help me remember anything. Many people associate memory loss with aging. However, memory loss we see um, when, when they studying um, older generations, whatnot, they they realize that it's not age itself that um, impacts memory. It's it's um, the use of it and and not keeping your mind engaged. Um, in fact, will my brother Jim is a good example of that. Um, he's always razzing. Razzing uh, me and whatnot. But I can't remember nothing. And there is such a thing as false memory. Researchers are beginning to understand that the human mind can create, exaggerate, distort, or reinvent a memory after a traumatic experience or something that impacted them greatly. And I've seen that in people. So where people like try to recall, oh yeah, this happened this way. Oh no no no! It happened that way for sure. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened, and they are they are sold on it. That's what they remember. But you you watch a video recording when I was like, what are you what are you even talking about? And um, I I've even had that happen to where I have um, recalled memories incorrectly. And it's it's so weird how the mind can do this to where you're. I and I've I've actually done it before to where I've I've sat there remembered a couple of things and thought it was one memory and. It kind of fused together, and then I'm sitting there thinking, wait, whoa, 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 how did I do that? that no, that was one situation, and that was like a year later. Somehow I, I meshed that memory together. It's, it's, crazy, it's crazy how the mind works, but, um, but it's, it's, again, just uh, something else that we can glorify God um, and, and his, uh, uh, he is uh, magnified and glorified through that. But... Aside all that, one day we will stand before God and give an account to Him for what we've done. Not in a judgment um, of mistakes made, but in a, in a sense of, of what we've accomplished with what He's given us. Now, the judgment seat of Christ will be a place of review. It will show if we have lived for Christ and others or for, for ourselves. 1 John chapter 2, verse 28 says, And now little children abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And it's, it's, a, it's a crazy thought to think, what if Christ was to appear now? What would we be in the middle of? I'm not. Man, I would love to be in church when he comes. Yeah. I'd love to be encouraging uh, uh, another uh, brother or sister in Christ. I'd, I'd love to be working hard and, and, and um, uh, glorifying the Lord in, in just everything I, I would say and do. Um, but how sad would it be if Christ appeared and we were living a life of shame? Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 15. In fact, we'll be talking about this, this passage for a little bit. 1 Corinthians chapter... three ten to 15 says, According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall, be, uh, shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall tr um, try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So there's a few things that we find in this passage. Of course, in verse 14, we find a wise builder. There's a wise builder in it can't help but think the wise builder is a, a is a Christian that is 
uh, faithfully studying the Word of God, that is, witnessing to those around them, being led of the, the, the Spirit, being a, um, uh, being a, a witness and, and being an encouragement, um, edifying those uh, others around them. But we also see that there's a worldly builder in verse 15. And this would be, um, this is a picture of the, the carnal Christian. They may have the, the right foundation, but what they build their life with and what they spend their life doing is not of any value. It won't last. While the wise builder will have a, a life that, uh, or a house that not only will last, um, uh, the, or endure fire, but becomes even greater value because of trials. And, and well, not trials, but because of um, the fire and whatnot. So, of course, we also have the wicked builder in verse 17, and that's a picture of the unsaved. Now, of course, we have to stop and think where is it that we fall when we start talking about which type of builder we are? Are we a wise builder? Are we. Uh, car, um, a worldly builder or the, um, I, I, I don't think any of us are in here are a wicked builder but I hope and pray that when um, Christ does come that we have a life that again is not full of shame but glory uh, Colossians 3 23 to 25 it says and whatsoever you do do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men Knowing that, the, uh, know, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Of course, not only is there a review, but there's also a reward. And of course, you start looking at what a Bema seat was. A Bema seat was actually in the um, Olympic arena. So it was a, a raised platform in the middle of the Olympic arena where the judge sat. After the contests were over, the winners would assemble before the Bema seat to receive the rewards from the judge. It, was not con uh, it wasn't a condemning seat, but a rewarder seat. Losing the race didn't mean execution. It only meant no reward. The Christian life is a race, and the divine, uh, the divine umper, uh, umpire is watching every contestant. Um, of course, the um, not only not only do we have the meaning and what the bema seat is, um, but we also have the fact of the the bema seat. Second Corinthians five ten says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Um, and of course we have the, the purpose of the Bema Seat, and that's to determine whether um, it's in the, the purpose of the Bema Seat is not to determine who enters heaven or who does not, it is not there to punish um, for sins or mistakes. It is there to, to reward those that faithfully serve the Lord. Of course, Hebrews eight twelve tells us, "For I will be merciful to uh, I for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more." In fact, Psalms 103 has a passage I, I love because we kind of read over it and not realize what's being stated. But Psalms 103, verse 10 to 12 says, He hath not de dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. What's amazing about what he states there is the fact that if you compare the North Pole to the South Pole, you can actually say, all right, the North Pole and the South Pole are exactly 
this measurement of miles and feet and inches. There's set points in which the North Pole and the South Pole are away from each other. But the funny thing is, when you start talking about the East and the West, the, the distance between the East and the West is infinite. How far do you go East until you actually reach your destination? No, it's always East. So the funny thing is, is even at that point, God has forgotten our iniquities and our sins to the point where it's still traveling today. And it's, it's such an amazing concept. Um, and it, it just, we just kind of pass by um, some of these truths. Um, hence, in the past, God dealt with, with us as sinners. In the past, God dealt with us as sinners. And we see that in Ephesians 2, um, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, and then Romans 5, 6 through 8. But during our present time, God deals with us as sons. He is providing for us. He is giving direction to us. He is, he is caring for us. But in the future, God will deal with us at the Bema Seat as stewards. We will one day have to stand before God and, and give an answer for what we have done with our lives. Of course, the material to be tested at the Bema Seat, um, now, of course, when it talks about the foundation, the foundation is the same for every man and woman. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only source of salvation. The foundation doesn't change. That was a uh, that is the constant when um, Paul discusses this, discusses it and uh, reveals the the aspect of the bema seat. But what changes from person to person is not the foundation, but the materials that they build the house out of. After salvation, we must build on the foundation. And you don't have a choice. He didn't say, oh, some people are going to build with gold, silver, and, and precious stones, and, and some people are going to be uh, hay, uh, stubble, and, and whatnot, and then some people aren't going to build at all. No, you, you do something with your life. Even when you decide not to do something, that is a decision. Now, of course, we have those with gold, silver, and precious stones. 1 Peter 1.7 says, says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Um, of course, wisdom, uh, um, silver is oftentimes associated with wisdom gained in favor with, with God. Proverbs 2 4 says, If thou seekest her as silver and searchest, her, searchest for her as for hid treasures. Um, silver was something to be desired and, and sought after. Um, of course, it's uh, in that passage, it's, uh, wait, is it talking about wisdom or the, no, it's talking about wisdom, um, uh, seeking wisdom. Um, Proverbs 3.14 says, For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof of fine gold. Um, Proverbs 8.10 says, Re uh, Receive my instruction, not silver, and knowledge um, rather than choice gold. Now, of course, these these things um, uh, gold and silver and precious stones have always and will always be um, a source of, of commerce and um, I can't think of the word. Um, it's escaping me right now. Um, but we must think past um, just the physical, but also the, the spiritual um, symbolism and whatnot there. Of course, those destructible and useless activities of no eternal value are described as wood, hay, and stubble. The funny thing is, is um, I was trying to grill just the other night, and it, just, it was abysmal. Like I, just, I didn't have the things I needed to do to really do it. I like to, to cook with, with charcoal. And... Um, I, know, I, I was surprised that Amanda wasn't laughing at me the whole time because I just I was making a fool of myself the other night trying to trying to grill. We ended up throwing the stuff in the air fryer and, and just kind of cheating that way. But 
the, the funny thing is, is after I was done trying to, to get a fire start, and I actually did get a fire going, but it just wasn't quite working out the way I wanted to, um, the only thing I had left afterwards was ash. There's, there's, no, there's no benefit. There's nothing else you can do after something like, like wood and charcoal and, and these other things just burn up. It's not like you can gather it back up and burn it again. It's done. It's used up. It's useless. Now, the sad thing is, is how is how is that going to be with our lives? Now, I, I don't think that everyone is an either or. I mean, we all, you know, there there are times where we waste time and we kind of think, man, I, man, I just wasted that whole day and didn't get anything done. I mean, I have days like that, and I'm just trying to rest and relax after working so much. But. There's, I, I wonder what it is in my life that I'll stand before God and it's like, you know what? You could have done something a lot better with what I've given you there. And he, it's, it's clear that God is not going to use that time to chastise, um, chastise us, but still at that same time, if I'm, even with work, if I was given a project and I just do a terrible job with it, I not only is there the ramifications of dealing with the project afterwards, but at the same time, the shame that I feel of getting done with something, it's just like, man, I just I butchered that. That looks terrible. I mean, I, I have, I'm not perfect. I, I make mistakes and, and, and there have been times where I got done with something I was working on it, but like, wow, I think I made that worse. Yeah. But I just I hope in and I pray that we are we are living our lives to to honor and glorify the Lord, and we're we're filling our lives with meaningful things. And it's not it's not like God is expecting everyone to to start a church in Egypt. God's not expecting us to go and and build a, a mega church over in the north side of Jacksonville. It, it's not so much the um, the amount that God expects from us. And, and honestly, reading and, and, and refreshing and, and studying this, there was a, a passage that came to mind, which I think is a great example. Luke chapter 21 and verses 1 through 4, and it says, And he looked up, and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in uh, thither two mites. And he said, Of a truth, I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these have their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, but she of her um, penury hath cast in all the living that she had. It was a passage that came to mind when I was uh, studying this, and I can't help but think, what 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 happen, what happens when these rich men that were giving for their own glory stand before God on the bema seat if they were saved, if they had faith in in, in God, in Jesus Christ, what would it look like for them, even though they had riches? and silver and gold on earth, I have a feeling that they had a lot of hay, stubble, and wood in heaven. And it's not so much that God looks for us to uh, hit a standard, but he looks to us to do the best that we can with what we have. And... Um, that's that is just a little devotion, um, something the Lord just kind of brought to mind, and, and something I've been kind of thinking about recently. Um, let's go ahead and, and go to the the Lord in prayer real quick. Lord, I just thank you for what you've done for us.